This is going to be the third video in my series on using LumiBot from LumiWealth to create a trading algorithm. And if you want to learn more about LumiBot's uh, programs, you can visit LumiWealth.com. Uh, I'm going to leave a link for a discount to all their programs in the description of this video. All right, so with that said, we're going to go ahead and jump into an algorithm. I do assume that you've you've watched probably the first video, so you have an understanding of, okay, what this is all about, uh, how does LumiBot work. All right, you can watch the first two, but at least the first one, uh, and you'll get a lot more uh, out of what I'm about to present here. Okay, so I'm going to be making a trend following algorithm, and to give you an idea of what it's supposed to do, I I have uh, made a graph. All right, so this is a graph of the last, say, 90 days of the gold ETF, GLD. And it's going to be a simple moving average crossover. That's what I'm going to try to implement with LumiBot. So the orange line here is the 9-day moving average, and the green line is the 21-day moving average that I'm going to be using as my signal generators. And then the question is, well, how do we implement this uh, with code in a trading algorithm that we just start and run for, say, the next year? So the intention here is that when the faster moving average, the 9-day moves above the slower moving average, the 21-day, uh, it's going to generate a buy signal. All right, so it would have generated one right around here, and we would have been long for all this time. And then when it moves uh, below that 21-day moving average, we're going to sell. And then we're actually going to go short. So we're going to try to capture that downward slope, some of that, and then you know stay short until it, it crosses over again. All right, so this would have generated a buy signal, a sell and go short a close the short and go long right here and, and at the end of this chart anyway we would be long the GLD ETF okay so let's go ahead and take a look at the code to make that happen all right, and rather than writing all this code live here, I decided to uh, write the code first, and I'm just going to talk about uh, what I've done in here. And I'm going to start off by saying uh, this video is for educational purposes, and you should not use it for investment advice. All right, so uh, all of these imports here I've done before in my previous videos, talked about them there. Uh, you know, the first one is, is okay, I'm going to be using date time for something, and then most everything else you can see is from LumiBot, and to learn more more about that stuff, you should watch uh, at least the first video in my series. Okay, I'm going to be using NumPy and Pandas as well to uh, to develop this algorithm. Okay, so the first thing I did was create a class called it trend and that inherits from LumaBot strategy and inside LumaBot strategy there's a number of life cycle methods and they sort of govern how the algorithm works. Okay, so I started off by setting some parameters. So if you want to work on this algorithm, I'm going to actually post the code uh, to GitHub, and I'll leave a link for that in the in the description as well. And okay, so you could go in and change the symbol, right? Maybe you want to use a d different ETF. Uh, I put in a quantity here, but I'm, I'm leaving it blank because I'm going to calculate it based on uh, the balance in my Alpaca account. Uh, but you could go ahead and change some of these parameters, and then you wouldn't have to mess around with uh, any of the the other code, and you would just change. Uh, you could even uh, run it on multiple symbols if you wanted to. Okay. So the next thing we do is set up the initialize conditions. And uh, typically what we do here is set a sleep time at least. I've set a couple other variables. But yeah, the sleep time, this is going to, uh, it's going to sleep for one day. And so it's going to basically try to recalculate whether or not the price has met a buy or sell condition uh, every day, once a day at the beginning of the day. And then it's just going to sort of sleep until the next day. All right, and I'm going back about two years now, right? So it's the end of 2024 as of this video. So I'm going to get about two years worth of data and then see how this thing performs. Now, I'm not going to be able to actually place trades because I don't know if it would generate a signal as soon as I run it here, right? But I'm going to back test it. And then, yeah, I don't expect it's going to perform all that well, but you could mess around with the parameters and see if you could make something useful out of this. All right, so with those variables set, the meat of the algorithm 
uh, goes in on trading iteration. So this is what's happening every day. And the first thing I'm going to do is get 22 days worth of data. So I need 22 days worth of data so I can generate either a buy or a sell signal if it's, if the conditions are met. All right. And the nice thing about uh, when I get this data, LumaBot has this convenience method built in where it just converts whatever you download, it can convert it into a data frame. All right. So that's a pandas data frame. And what I'm going to do first is add a nine day moving average and then a 21 day moving average to that data frame. All right. And the other things in there are, you know, open, high, low, close, volume, adjusted close. Okay. And I'm just going to use close. All right. And then I'm going to also add a signal column to this data frame. And the signal column is going to test whether or not a buy or sell condition is, is being met. And then it would, when there's a buy signal being met, then it will place a buy and otherwise it will just place nothing there. All right. So this, this MP where essentially works like a, an Excel if function. All right. And so, uh, I, I nested inside that uh, logical and so I can test multiple conditions here, right? Similar to Excel and the and function in Excel. All right. So the first thing I want to do is see, oh, did the nine day move above the 21 day? And if it did, was the previous day, was it below the 21 day? All right. So there's only a very specific time when this happens. Otherwise it would continuously generate buy signals whenever the nine day was above the 21 day. Okay. So I fill that in initially and then uh, I check to see if a sell condition is met. Essentially do the opposite here. Did the 21, uh, sorry, did the nine day move below the 21 day? And if it did, was it above the 21 day the previous day? Okay. So when that happens, we get a sell signal. All right. So the vast majority of this data is just going to be empty in the signal column. All right. And then occasionally we'll get a buy or a sell there. Okay. And then to tell the algorithm whether or not it's time to buy or sell, we're going to just look at whatever's in the last row uh, in that signal column. Okay. So then I'm going to go ahead and get the symbol from my parameters that I set up above. It's the GLD ETF. Like we said, I'm going to go ahead and get the last price and then I'm going to go get, see how much cash I have. I'm using a paper account on Alpaca so you can reset this. Uh, they're very easy to set up. So that's why I'm using Alpaca you don't have to put in any personal information. So uh, it's a good account to sort of get your feet wet with this kind of stuff. All right. And then when I go long or short, I'm only going to use uh, half of my cash. All right. So uh, I won't have any other positions, but uh, I'm only going to use 50% of the cash. And I'm really doing that because when I go short, there's a margin requirement that uh, basically says, oh, I have to have uh, half the cash to buy that short position uh, on hand. All right. And so let me just go into the logic of, okay, well, is it time to buy or sell? So we're going to look at that last row, the, the signal row there. Uh, is it a buy? And if it's a buy, we're going to go see, do we have already a position? And uh, if we have a position, we're going to close it. So if we had a position and, and we have a buy condition, it would have been short. So we'll close it. And then we're going to uh, generate a, a new order. It's going to be a buy and it's going to be based on this quantity that is made up of half my cash floor division by price. So I don't get a fractional share in there. All right. Then we just place that order. Okay. So if it is not a buy condition, we want to check and see, oh, is it a sell condition? And same logic here, right? We're going to go see if there's a position. If there's a position, we're going to close it. And then we're going to, again, use half my cash and go short on that. I'll see that quick change here. Okay. So that's about all there is to it here. All right. The most complicated thing we have is this, uh, making a data frame with a signal in there. The rest of this code is pretty straightforward, right? We're just sort of looking at an, you know, a conditional here. Do we have a buyer? Do we have a sell? And if we don't, well, we just sort of sit here and do nothing. Okay. All right. So like I said, I'm not going to be able to actually run this thing live. So I'm just going to go ahead and back testing, but this is the, the logic you would need to actually start placing or running this algorithm if you're happy with it. Okay. And, uh, I'm going to go back, let's go back to the start of the year so we can get a good idea here. All right. And then, yeah, if you've been following gold at all, it has been sort of moving up pretty steadily. It has some volatility, obviously. And so this strategy is saying, oh, can we monetize that volatility or should we just, you know, buy and hold? 
All right, so then I'm going to compare it to just buying and holding gold over this same period. Okay, so we'll go ahead and run that. And when it's done running, you're going to get a couple of reports here about uh, the performance. Uh, one of them is uh, from Quantstats. So Lumibot wraps around Quantstats, and we get a nice comprehensive report about the performance there. And then if you want to look at your actual algorithm, see when it's buying and selling, and see your cash position here, you have this report as well. All right, so uh, we can see the first thing we did was we went short okay and then right the the price sort of uh, didn't cooperate that much right so it went short and then it quickly went long and you can see what happened we closed the short and then we went long here all right and then the next time we had a sell and right over here and again we closed the long we went short and then a few days later it looks like we went long again all right so it looks like you know at least back in this area there's sort of a lot of whipsawing so i wouldn't expect that thing to perform very well but on occasion there's a sort of a long trend upward or downward and and that's what we're seeing if we can we can use that and outperform buying and holding gold all right so if you saw cats sort of out of the bag it did not right so we overall over this two-year period returned about five percent annually annualized um, where if we had bought gold all right we would have been earning over 22 percent annualized all right so over the period up 43 percent buy and hold over the period up about nine percent with with our simple moving average crossover all right, so as I predicted, I, I didn't expect this one to be uh, groundbreaking. It's pretty simple as an idea, but it, it does give you a chance to see, oh, how would you implement something similar using even a different technical analysis indicator with Python and Lumibot. All right, so I hope that helps, and I will see you in the future. I will be making a video talking about trading options and seeing if we can do something similar, beat the market with some kind of option strategy. So hope to see you there.